Bruce Lawn. When I first came to faith in God, I asked, what should I read in the Bible? And people told me, hey, man, check out the Gospel of John and just kind of keep reading it. And I was like, this is incredible. The words would just jump off the page for me. And I loved reading the Gospels. And then someone told me, man, you should check out reading a chapter of Proverbs a day. And I was like, Proverbs? What's Proverbs about? He's like, it's written by this guy named Solomon. And Solomon was like the wisest man who ever lived. And God showed up to him, offered him anything. And he asked for discernment and wisdom. And then he wrote Proverbs. And I said, oh, that's dope. And so there's 31 Proverbs. There's usually 31 Proverbs in a month. I started reading a chapter of Proverbs a day. I've been doing it ever since. Not perfect at it, but I've been doing fairly well at it. And I told you guys one of the coolest things is being able to listen to it on the audio version of the Bible app. Uh, I love the book of Proverbs. I, it, it's it's an easy way to stay on top of your reading plan. And so I'm going to be covering Proverbs chapter 10 for you guys. Not the whole chapter, just a couple of things that, that stand out to me. And by the way, shout out to all you guys that maybe were here way back in the day, 2019, 2018. I used to do a series on Instagram live every morning at 6 a.m. called Pre-Gym Proverbs, where I will pull up to the gym with my pre-workout and I would literally co cover a couple verses from whatever chapter it was. That was kind of the infancy of this and there'd be a couple folks there every morning and I would have to pee real bad and that was when I knew it was time for me to wrap up Proverbs, <laughs> that pre-gym Proverbs. All right, so let's check this out. This is Proverbs chapter 10, verse four and five is what I wanted to focus on. So verse four, uh, lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. He who gathers crops in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. Diligent hands, crops in the summer, sleeping during the harvest. Those are the, the, the three themes in this passage. A lot of us get caught up in how to build our lives out. And we don't quite understand that when you're sowing to reap, when you're sowing a, a, for a harvest, that it doesn't happen instantaneously, that it takes a season or two, that it takes a while that you have to sow the seed, care for the land, maybe add manure, wait for the rain, or get some type of irrigation system, so on and so forth, so that you're sowing, but you're not reaping until the next season, right? You're sowing, but you're not reaping until the next season. Matter of fact, the only thing that is instant in the same season is stuff that's useless, like weeds and stuff that's really going to destroy your garden or your farm in general. It talks about diligent hands. It talks about sowing. And, and, it, and it talks about uh, reaping in the summer, reaping a harvest in the summer. And also, and also uh, the, the sun that sleeps through the harvest. Okay. So Let's go back to verse 5. He who gathers crops in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. So it's this juxtaposition of a prudent son is doing what? A prudent son has diligent hands, is understanding the process, and is out there gathering the crops. The disgraceful son sleeps through the harvest. Now, the issue with this is that both sons probably contributed to this crop. Both sons were a part of this process. Both sons were working this land, yet it's, it's juxtaposing that one son gets up and gets to the harvest, and the other son blows through it. What if in your life you did all the right things, you went out and you did the diligent hands, but you didn't have the awareness of what season it was so that you can go out and actually reap the harvest. What if you sleep through the harvest in your life? What if the very thing that you've been waiting to happen, you ah take a nap and just completely, completely, completely ignore it and blow it off? That will be very disappointing. And I think there's a lot of us that are going through life that, hey, I'm going to work, 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 and I'm going to have diligent hands and I'm going to do this entire thing. But when it comes to actually, when it comes to actually gathering the harvest, we sleep through it because we did not have the awareness of what season it was. Maybe we did not have the additional drive. Maybe we just wanted to follow our desires, follow pleasure instead of purpose, whatever it is. It's disgraceful, right? So I want those of you guys that are watching this, those of you guys that are processing this, consider the process for you. Consider that you're not sowing to eat 
right now, you're sowing to reap later. Okay. And so if you're sowing and you're sowing and you're sowing and you're sowing and you're working the land, it's not going to be instantaneous. And sometimes you might miss it. This is what I mean in me building this YouTube channel, right? I had kept, I started this YouTube channel around 2015 doing kind of like a podcast format. Then I pivoted and I started doing like vlog type stuff. And then I went back to just kind of like regular talking head videos. 2019, I started uploading a video every single day and I kept putting out music and the process kept putting out music, kept putting out music. And then finally 2020 hit and I said, I'm gonna try this new format of going live doing multiple videos in one day. So here I am sowing and reaping for almost five years. And it was on the fifth year of the sowing and reaping that this channel finally took off. And we've had immense growth, uh, about 60,000 new subscribers in the last year. It all happened at the end of the cycle. And had I, had I gotten scared and stayed scared like I did when the pandemic started, had I just buried my head, had I just went back to what I always knew to do, which was kind of do multiple things at once, I would have never caught this harvest. I would have never been prepared for this harvest, right? So guys, be careful, be careful. Don't nap through the harvest. Don't sleep through your harvest. Don't sleep on yourself. Don't sleep on what God is doing. This is why I think things like daily reading, things like prayer, things like worship, things like hearing from the Holy Spirit are so important because if you, you could grind so hard, so hard, so hard, and then at the end, at the end of the process, you completely sleep through the harvest. The harvest spoils. You miss out. Let me know what y'all think about this. Let me know if you guys want me to continue on this series of daily Proverbs. I'm going to try it, but I need y'all to like these videos, share these videos, and tell a friend to tell a friend about these ideas. Kingstream Entertainment. Bruce Lawn. When the culture says do what you love, we respond with love what you do. You may have responsibilities that you aren't passionate about, but loving what you do means being faithful to what's in front of you, committing to excellence as if that were your greatest dream. Colossians 3.23 says, work diligently at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Love what you do. Love what you do. Do, do. Yo, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you found it valuable, considering giving it a like and subscribing. This month, I'm releasing the Love What You Do collection. And to celebrate, I'm doing a three-day virtual event to help us go from learning to love what we do to ultimately doing what we love. By the way, it's free. So hit the link in the description to grab your seat today.